in Israel, we meet in a small apartment. So the meeting room is very small. And uh, sometimes it gets very crowded. It's like sitting people like here. And, uh, but it has a certain advantage of uh, like having a more cozy feeling. Yeah, where <clears throat> because if you know people sit there, you don't know if they are smiling or uh, depressed or uh, <laughs> yeah. So we meet first time for a evening chanting meditation and, uh, and there is an opportunity for me to visit here your group in Delhi um, <clears throat> as a part of the uh, um, connection and uh, growth of a lay group, lay practitioners uh, with, uh, with our um, monastic Sangha <coughs> and uh, in the way that uh, <coughs> the Buddha um, had a vision of how uh, there will be the monastic community of those that dedicate mm. life and dedicate uh, their, their themselves uh, to the practice by not by living the home life as is, as it is called um, and then being a, like a core and center for many other um, students of Dhamma, followers of Dhamma, any other people in the society that uh, have the interest, the faith, the uh, um, desire to join. So, and that's also a part of uh, your um, wish and uh, kind of the w development towards having a place for a monastic community that we live live in India uh, probably somewhere in the north uh, and having this connection um <clears throat> And having such a center, this place is a, a great uh, uh, asset for a, for a group like yours that can come and uh, and meet here and practice here and invite uh, monks to stay here. Uh, that's a <clears throat> life in the city is not considered as the best condition for Dharma practice, but. Uh, if we, if we know to arrange our own life and maybe if we have some merit to have uh, some conducive conditions and then coming together as a group is actually a major support um, within the big uh, society of uh, thousands and millions of people rushing around doing this and that and uh, uh, taking care of livelihood and family and various tasks and duties uh, to somehow um, <clears throat> within that to, to bring our life to, uh, to merge with the Dhamma, to be, to be a life of of Dhamma, of the practice, of the uh, development on that path is not so easy. 
So the choice of monastic life is indeed like a choice of a renunciation, giving up the family life and home life, which as long as it, it is possible in this world, it's quite a, it means the human world is still a, um, providing such a fortunate opportunity. And then for a, like the more ordinary lay life, family, home life, uh, one can still um, design one life and gradually uh, make the adjustments and the uh, um, considerations of how one's life can be a uh, um, conducive for sila, development of sila or virtue, uh, which we consider as the as the base, the foundation, and uh, combined with a generosity, a life of a, that has aspects of giving and contribution and uh, um, <clears throat> development on the side of. Uh, good heart, generous heart, <clears throat> and then on top of that what we call the bhavana development of a uh, mental uh, qualities uh, which are conducive for uh, strength and clarity and uh, um, inquiry into various questions and various problems and various challenges that that we face in life or that are like built in in the human life uh, and that's the way to develop gradually uh, more wisdom and more insight into what is what and uh, what's what's the what is a good path what is a noble path in this uh, human life and what is a benefit for this life and the next life and the ultimate uh, good and ultimate benefit and uh, if one would say that there's no one compares to the Buddha as a guide and inspiration and uh, example uh, then uh, indeed we are fortunate that we can we can learn from such a teacher and uh, a tradition that that follows follows in the footsteps of the buddha and the footsteps of the enlightened disciples for so many generations <clears throat> These days the world is getting, we call it smaller, like a village, one village. Uh, lots of traveling around, lots of a mixing of people uh, from different cultures, different races. And uh, <clears throat> of course, it's not yet, uh, it's, it's maybe it's like uh, using the expression of a village is a bit uh, extreme but it kind of gives uh, an idea of uh, how much there's more of a connection and more of a, a interaction um, 
and uh, <clears throat> to consider from the point of view of Dhamma, so in some ways the world is very confused and very complicated and who knows <laughs> where is it going. Uh, but in terms of Dhamma, um, there is an opportunity these days to, to meet the Buddha's teaching and to take interest and learn and find uh, also places to practice, which is quite remarkable all, all over, almost all over the globe or in many, many countries, many places. Um, and uh, in some way also, it's nature to have a more of international communities. So, uh, in the case of Ajahn Chah, who was quite a remarkable teacher, uh, what we may call a Buddhist master, um, <coughs> can say, certainly one of the important ones of the last century. Uh, then there was this uh, natural attraction of uh, not only Thai, Thai people who have the interest and had the, uh, found him as a teacher and inspiration uh, for the Dhamma, for, for their life, uh, <clears throat> for their spiritual quest, but also uh, gradually a stream of Western, Westerners um, um, considering that tra traveling became more uh, popular, easier, uh, and uh, Westerners would travel around Asia. Um, so these days, it's been, it's now like maybe getting close to about 50, 50 years since uh, Lumpo Sumedo, who was just a young, young monk Sumedo, came, came first. And uh, now there's a, indeed an international community spread, spread around many, many countries, many places. Um, and uh, <clears throat> this is uh, one of the uh, powerful, powerful and uh, attractive and convincing aspects of the Buddha's teaching, that it is indeed uh, um, fully universal. There's no, no like uh, boundaries there regarding a particular culture, particular race, particular group of people. And also as we are chanting timeless, the Dharma is timeless. What's been right uh, 2,000, 3,000 years ago regarding the human, human life, human questions, human uh, uh, quest for for happiness, for peace, for a, a understanding uh, regarding uh, life and existence, then it's pretty much uh, the same these days. Um, these days there's a lot of inquiry in, in the way of modern science, which is uh, in <clears throat> you know, many kind of sciences and research and inquiry and uh, um, regarding many aspects and many issues and uh, including things like psychology and uh, so, so sociology, sociology or how it's called, sociology. Um, no. So things that are closer to the human experience and human life or things, things that are a bit further, like whatever physics and chemistry and the more like material world. Uh, but all together, even these days, the, the knowledge and the science, science of the Buddha is still very, very, very relevant. Um, uh, but it is knowledge and science that uh, can be um, understood more deeply and uh, clearly and can be uh, proved more deeply and clearly uh, depending on one's own practice and effort, uh, particularly in the area of what we call citta bhavana development, mind development or heart development, 
uh, and the various uh, skillful means of meditation and uh, um, other other spiritual uh, practices uh, that we that either the Buddha taught or like they've been developed and established uh, in uh, traditions. Um, so it's not only by um, intellectual studies or research on uh, external research uh, as they do things in psychology and so forth or even brain research but uh, ultimately it takes one's own uh, internal research um, and the internal uh, work <clears throat> and it's been the experience of many probably millions and many generations that uh, this path is uh, is bearing fruits it's uh, the more one is uh, investigating and practicing and um, testing it it actually works uh, but that's for each individual to uh, as we also chant, to be experienced by the wise. So something to be experienced um, little by little um, according to one's uh, own pace and uh, whatever opportunity, whatever uh, strengths or efforts or commitments. <clears throat> And the Buddha, as we know, is not asking us to be so much of believers, but rather asking us to be uh, practitioners, to be listeners, to begin with uh, people that are willing and able to listen, and then people that are willing and able to reflect, to consider the, the matter that has been uh, talked about and taught and explained. Uh, in um, many ways uh, to, to use reflection and investigation in terms of the meaning and the uh, significance of, uh, of the Dhamma is already an important step. And then, of course, being uh, willing and able to apply the teachings, so to actually bring them into one's life in terms of one's actions, in terms of one's choices in life, in terms of one's uh, um, priorities uh, of time and energy and uh, resources that we have, how to use them, how to spend them. <clears throat> and then one's also one's uh, um, willingness to dedicate time and effort uh, to um, give the give the path that the Buddha taught the path uh, of practice path of development really really uh, place in one's life <clears throat> So we said if there is something anyone likes to uh, raise as uh, something to uh, talk a bit about, to uh, explain, to discuss, we can do. <clears throat> I think it's getting a bit hot. Is it like... Uh... 
not to Maybe Bhante, you could tell us how you came from Israel to Thailand and your journey. That will be a good inspiration for all of us. Mm -hmm. From? From th Israel, how did you reach Thailand and how did you choose to become a mendicant? And mm -hmm. So it will be a good inspiration for all of us. can say that generally as human beings we <clears throat> we have both the ability and uh, some kind of tendency to uh, for inquiry you know like uh, we are born as little babies and grow as little children and uh, we learn about the world and uh, <clears throat> have to face all kinds of uh, questions and all kinds of uh, experiences and uh, maybe at least for some of us it also becomes a more uh, present uh, aspect of life that we are wondering what's what is this life? What is worthy in this life? Who is worthy of respect, of, uh, of uh, emulation? Um, and uh, many kinds of what's the meaning of religion? What's the meaning of uh, 
happiness or where can we find it. Um, we may consider questions regarding death, regarding birth, regarding many kinds of things. And we also, we may come across various philosophies or uh, religious uh, ideas, beliefs and so forth. Uh, so in my case, I can remember from a very young age a kind of a tendency to observe, to, uh, to inquire, to uh, wonder uh, what <coughs> maybe matters that are beyond the ordinary, the ordinary kind of life where we just uh, do what we have to do, go to school, have family, have some uh, good time playing as children and uh, these kind of things. So there was, there was some uh, um, added added kind of dimension uh, to life that I can remember from a very young age. Um, and uh, whatever I could uh, come across, um, whether in uh, the people around me, the school, reading books, uh, having friends, having uh, uh, whatever I was exposed to, uh, a part of it was indeed some kind of uh, inquiry and uh, uh, interest. Um, also, can say in terms of human nature, uh, for the most part, I wasn't very inspired by most people that I saw around me. <laughs> and uh, but there was some kind of a uh, inner. Uh, faith or a, um, intuition that there, there can be more than that. Uh, so, the, so I kept uh, having it in mind and maybe uh, searching for it, even if not very actively, but uh, as, as a kind of a dimension in life and uh, interest in life. So, <coughs> and uh, so that is more of a underlying condition because one can talk about, uh, you know, like uh, um, tell a story of how you come across something or another, uh, but there's always some kind of a roots that in terms of a inclination or interest or a certain desire to, to look for something, to uh, uh, to search for something, <clears throat> so so that went through from very early childhood and uh, along the years, and uh, those days in Israel, Buddhism was not was not uh, that much well known as uh, as it is these days yeah so if talking about 30 40 years ago there was much less of a um, presence of buddhism whether in books or or practicing centers or groups or all that so uh, i actually didn't didn't know hardly anything um, and uh, but i did begin to have some uh, coming across like a Eastern, Eastern uh, philosophy and yoga and some teachings related to yoga. That was the beginning and that was maybe the time I was in the army, about uh, 20 years old, something like that. And, uh, and then I, later I had the opportunity to, to travel to India. Uh, so uh, I was maybe nearly 23 and uh, came to India to travel uh, already with some interest in yoga and I will remember landing in Bombay and traveling south and going to a yoga ashram and it was very nice and they taught something like Advaita teachings uh, and uh, I took lots of interest in it there was a lot of a uh, interest and uh, enthusiasm about it but it didn't quite yet catch me in terms of a, um, 
having like uh, as if like oh that's that's it that's explaining what 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 uh, what we want to know and that uh, um, but then later on by somebody's recommendation of a uh, the Tibetans living in the north of India. I traveled up north and uh, went various places and then reached uh, Dharamsala and uh, um, joined, a, they call it, I think, introduction to Buddhism and meditation. And that was a very powerful uh, um, meeting of the Dhamma, meeting of the teachings, and uh, also some practice of meditation, and it was a very, very powerful uh, um, experience of, of hearing things that make so much sense and, and match so many things that I had like kind of a floating in my, in my mind and, and adding a lot of a, uh, a lot of a perspective picture of a, of a rega regarding uh, you can say existential like uh, important matters and then giving a path that uh, and, and uh, having the point of this life we can develop ourselves as human beings uh, rather than looking for so many things external externally uh, that we can learn and then develop as a skill, as a profession, as knowledge, and uh, the whole idea of actually a human as a human within oneself, that's where the, the essence lies in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, developing the, the qualities, the, the quality of life, the quality of a human. Uh, the training of the heart, the training of the mind, it just all made so much sense and uh, as, as, a, as, a, as a whole picture also, uh, whether it's the Four Noble Truths, whether ma many, many kind of things and the idea of meditation where one sits and turns inwardly and begins to work with this monkey mind, with this kind of a um, um, phenomena there that usually we actually we're not very not very uh, um, aware of and not very skilled in uh, in uh, um, working with our mental mental uh, um, mental life so it all made so much sense and was so inspiring so that's where uh, there was really no doubt that that's what I want to continue with. Uh, an incredible faith that the Buddha was indeed enlightened and the Dhamma is, the, is a truth that he, he gave uh, from, from a genuine knowledge. Um, and even meeting like the, the people there who were Buddhists and some there was nuns and monks and uh, it all really was very, very inspiring. So that's how it began and uh, <clears throat> so that was still in India and also the Tibetan, Tibetan tradition um, and later on continued and went to Nepal which also they have like uh, some Tibetan a good uh, Tibetan center there uh, and in any way there was a plan to continue to Thailand after a six months visa in India something like that uh, and so I went to Thailand but it was very obvious to me that Im kind of a, immediately I was inquiring what w where, where could I learn Buddhism in Thailand so they recommended a quite a well-known uh, place of uh, Ajahn Buddha Dasa, uh, where they they have like international center, so that was the beginning of coming to know Theravada Buddhism, and uh, it was very also very attractive and uh, more simple kind of uh, teachings that are uh, kind of simple and. Uh, um, it gave me a sense. It was a whole exploration of uh, what is the Dhamma, what is the teaching, what is the path, but coming across the Theravada teachings was uh, very, very naturally kind of uh, resonating for me. 
um, uh, let's say compared to Tibetans where they have the deities and the, uh, it was like a kind of a big a big picture of many many things and uh, when I came across a more down-to-earth straight uh, teaching then uh, somehow the inclination was quite uh, obvious um, and, and then I'm also at that time I picked it was a 10 days and then they they get, they presented some books on a table and I, I remember picking a book of Ajahn Chah, just picking it from the table, and then reading one page was uh, also very uh, powerful kind of inspiration and a sense of this is a real master, like just uh, having so much trust in these, uh, in the in the words, in this teaching that I read, just just one page. Uh, so. Um, and then there was another book, was a guide to uh, monasteries and centers in Thailand. Those days it was still books, not like you click everything on the uh, internet. So, so then I saw, oh, there is this international forest monastery, Disciples of Ajahn Chah. And uh, so I, I, it was very obvious that I want to, to go and see the place, visit. Um, but altogether, it was maybe st still quite a long time, a year or more than a year that I was uh, um, exploring uh, various places. And I was also inspired by the Japanese, the Zen tradition. So I decided to go to Japan and, and uh, try the, uh, the Zen tradition. And along that time also, there was a more, more and more of an inclination to take monastic life. So it was also consideration of where would be good to to take a life as a monk, which and uh, still yeah traveling and visiting and staying in places and uh, going back home and then going back to Japan already like leaving home for, with the with the with the uh, um, clear direction of taking monastic life, but uh, going first to Japan, to some monastery I was recommended of and spending about half a year uh, there and, and then later uh, in other two or three places. And then that experience made me decide, gave me the conclusion of wanting to go come back to Nana, Wat Nanacha to take the the uh, monastic life in the uh, forest tradition Ajahn Chah community. So uh, that's uh, how I ended up there. Um, so it wasn't so much a choice of uh, Thailand, but uh, it was. Um, the experience of the life in a forest monastery and the inspiration of Ajahn Chah and some other like Ajahn Mahabua uh, and also it was living in Japan made me very gave me a very clear understanding of how Thailand is still a very very strong Buddhist culture while a place like Japan that used to be uh, a very uh, prosperous uh, Buddhist country with lots of uh, monasteries and uh, but but w these days it's already quite a kind of a disappearing dying while in Thailand it is very much uh, alive uh, so I could see quite a bit of a difference <clears throat> and then also the the monastic life that I that is still following Vinaya compared to monastic life that is not not anymore also I could see a very big uh, big difference um, but it was all, ev everything was still very kind of young uh, in terms of understanding uh, things but somehow that was the uh, the decision and uh, looking back on it it's uh, 
there's no uh, certainly no regret or uh, if at the beginning there were many doubts what is right to do and where to go and who where is you know we always want the best where is the best place to to uh, to settle for for practicing and taking monastic life so now after many years i feel very uh, uh, very happy with the choices i took uh, not every choice, of course, but in terms of the bigger, bigger picture of of uh, joining the uh, this uh, this community of Ajahn Chah and uh, ordaining in uh, in Wat Nana Chat and uh, also having a fortune to ordain with uh, Lumpur Liam as a as a preceptor as a teacher, uh, it's a yeah, great uh, fortune. <clears throat> Although people may think what a strange thing it is to be born in a Western country or in a, as a Jewish and these kind of uh, conditions and then to end up as a Buddhist monk, for me personally it was actually very much uh, as a feeling natural, not, not some kind of a how we call it a revolution or <laughs> it just uh, and in in many ways uh, coming to meet meet the buddha dhamma sangha felt like coming back home like a place that i really feel at home while the the the, the culture i was growing with also felt at home in some ways but uh, not in a not on a, on a deeper kind of a dimension uh, so it's uh, it can be like that, uh, and if one takes in consideration the uh, ooh, the understanding of karma and rebirth and such things, then of course we may have been uh, the kind of uh, connections and uh, conditions that we acquired and uh, relations that we acquired in past past time uh, can uh, of course affect us in this lifetime and uh, what is what is appearing on the surface is just surface and there's much more than that uh, uh, underneath so uh, of course there is uh, some reason why we are born in such and such a place uh, but also there are there can be connections and a kind of a links to to other places other people um, so the, these days coming back to the fact that the world is kind of a smaller place we can uh, we can take advantage of that in terms of uh, finding our home can call it um, As we see these days, one can uh, find a spiritual home in w within the Buddha, the Buddha Dhamma Sangha, the, the Buddhist uh, community. If we want, we can call it the Buddhist religion, uh, and then go back home to one's uh, um, roots in this uh, life, or uh, maybe roots in terms of a. Uh, culture and so forth and uh, and bring the bring things together 
<clears throat> so uh, and that's the way that uh, uh, the Buddha Dhamma Sangha can can spread in uh, in in other cultures in other uh, other places in the world and as we see here like India which is the birthplace the culture that the Buddha was born at and uh, uh, but also a very a very uh, maybe a culture that went through many many uh, changes and many uh, uh, a long long past a long history then uh, can uh, can bring back the um, these uh, these teaching this past this uh, heritage um, also ba back to this country <coughs> In some ways, it's easier here than in a Western culture, because Indian culture is, uh, yeah, having the the roots. Uh, although difficult, easy, there's always many, many uh, angles on it. <clears throat> but for example, just uh, the the customs or the practice of uh, paying homage. Uh, bowing to Buddha Dhamma Sangha in a Jewish culture, it's a very uh, challenging one because uh, uh, it's like in the Bible not to bow, not to uh, whatever we call it, like bowing to statues or to uh, is, uh, is considered a very uh, not, a, not good thing to do, not suitable. Um, so there can be quite a bit of resistance to it. Of course, if we uh, consider the, the meaning of it, what's behind it, then it's not a, it's not a, um, how we call it, a idol worship, uh, but rather a homage, respect, uh, giving oneself as a, a gesture of oneself as a as a disciple, as somebody who is willing to uh, to listen, to to change, to uh, to give respect, many beautiful things. But sometimes we have cultural conditionings, and uh, it creates like a barrier that we have to that is more difficult to cross. <clears throat> Or even like the the life of renunciation, monastic life. I guess in India it's like an ancient tradition of a more of understanding and respect for it. Uh, the sadhu and uh, you know different uh, and uh, in uh, Western culture, for the most part, it's like uh, there's no no uh, nature respect or. Uh, understanding of it so it takes more work to uh, to explain to uh, to see the value of it to appreciate it <clears throat> Venerable Ajahn, uh, good evening. Uh, could I ask you one question, please? Hmm. Yes. Um, Ajahn, we all know that uh, um, the. No, that's fine. We all know that rebirth is because of ignorance, and we practice Buddhism to see through this ignorance. Uh, and we know that the way out of this cycle is and the way to dependent cessation is actually breaking this cycle breaking looking through this delusion 
I would just like to uh, ask you um, as to how do you think a layman should be practicing in a daily life to see through this uh, web of delusion because we are uh, often overwhelmed uh, by the circumstances and though in theory we do understand Buddhism and we are practicing to whatever extent we can, but we are not totally able to uh, break this web of delusion. And so I guess we continue in that cycle of dependent origination. So what would you, what would be your advice on this? Thank you. Mm. it's a big question relates to many many things um, <laughs> I think it's a very important task to take the teachings and uh, not just as like a beautiful and convincing theory and ideals um, but to to take it and uh, really uh, reflect on it um, internalize it investigate it and of course little by little to bring it inward inwardly through practice uh, so that gradually it's uh, we we understand we really begin to understand the meaning of it and the significance of it in in a in a personal way as as for us uh, and so w one way you can talk about it is like first we have to see where we're at so the Buddha is giving a map, a big map, and we have to uh, the, to to learn to see to understand where where are we standing, yeah, yeah, in this in this lifetime, in this uh, this particular person that we are, um, so that we are not trying to practice through ideals. You know, the Buddha says that uh, craving is not good, and you know, ignorance is terrible, and. <laughs> But to, to really like uh, see where we're at, what are our desires, what are our uh, um, ways of, um, or let's say, place in the world, what are we engaging with, what are our uh, uh, wishes and responsibilities and so forth. Uh, and little by little um, investigate and consider and learn uh, what 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 are these uh, and that's actually it's it's not obvious that's a part of the meditation where we actually learn ourselves more more clearly more more uh, thoroughly uh, who is this person what are these emotions what are these uh, um, maybe motivations that motivate us to do things what are our maybe dreams you know what would be my dream of life and uh, um, and and what are who are the important people for us what kind of views we have about things many many things to actually see the the reality of it uh, and then gradually to consider what are the what, what's going on there and uh, and is it is it in line with truth is it in line with what is beneficial uh, what would be a beginning with steps to a life of progress, of development, of a life of the benefit for oneself, the benefit of others. So little by little, from from knowing more clearly who we are, what what is going on with us uh, internally, and also like the the environment, the environment that we live in, because each one has got like a different. Uh, uh, you can say uh, field of who are the important people for us what are the important issues in our life and so forth 
uh, and then from that seeing is what what is the delusion there in terms of our uh, views our um, wants and desires and so forth and little by little doing kind of a changes adjustments uh, in in our life and it's both internally the way that we think about things that way that we direct our uh, energies of uh, of uh, care and devotion and uh, responsibility and so forth uh, so it's like and then the actions of course that comes like uh, what 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 kind of a uh, tasks and duties and uh, undertakings we will take of course if we are young then we still have many choices where we're going to study something what kind of profession where are we going to live maybe when we're older we already settled in a certain life but even within that we can consider how do we spend the time how do we relate to various issues of health and family and uh, and uh, um, livelihood and so forth uh, so little by little bringing the Dhamma into our life by investigating actually what's going on there, seeing more clearly and looking and uh, understanding and then taking the, the teaching of the wise, you know, we consider the Buddha as the wise of wise or it can be some other, other teachers and uh, teachings and then beginning to work with that. Um, so, which is, of course, some challenge because we are already quite often, we have many attachments in regard to what our pleasures, our views, our, the people that we are uh, living with, and then little by little considering what, 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 what is what. Is this kind of a relationship is good or we can do some changes? If this kind of hobby is beneficial or we can give it up and spend our time in a different way, uh, whether we have like uh, material resources, how are we going to use them, everything becomes a, a part of a inquiry and a possibility of change, yeah? Not a revolution, but like little, little changes. Uh, and then it's a very much of a personal responsibility and personal uh, um, project to to begin and look and uh, learn and then uh, see what we can do yeah uh. and it is it is quite possible whether one lives a family life a, a household life but uh, in terms of uh, the, the the little steps that we can do that's uh, it's a gradual gradual path yeah gradual path um and uh, we are each one of us is different in terms of how we can do it what what will be the uh, the way that we apply the teachings and uh, how can we discover the uh, the let's say the the ignorance that is uh, lying within us and little by little uh, bring uh, wisdom in there, bring uh, views and a vision that is more, more uh, uh, in line with truth, in line with what is beneficial. So little, little steps, yeah. <clears throat> And even the matter of, of a future life or rebirth, then indeed, if it becomes an issue that we consider, it's already quite uh, extraordinary. Most people don't think in these ways. You know, we we often have a very short vision. Yeah, we look we look very very short short sight, uh, and then to have a, a vision that is looking further is is also a gradual change where actually yeah we look at things in that way uh, and it becomes for us more and more a uh, kind of meaningless to be so engrossed in uh, in short term kind of a um, how we call it short term um, goals yeah 
or of course we may have we may have all kinds of uh, goals that we fulfill or tasks and but we 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 become more interested in in a long term kind of a, or or a bigger vision um in what we're doing and then it be, gradually it becomes like things are are we put them together in terms of the little actions that we do what are the what what's the meaning in terms of a short term in terms of long term and one can say for example meditation practice is like investment yeah at the beginning maybe we don't quite get what's the point and it's difficult and it's it takes yeah it takes uh, but if we see it as an investment for for the benefit that is a long term benefit not a short term benefit then maybe we're willing to um give up the the kind of a certain pleasures hobbies or whatever things that we could do that are gratifying more instantly more easily but we are we are, we are investing in something that will give a, that has a meaning and benefit for a longer term um but it has to happen like a uh, little little by little <clears throat> and it's not like having being hurried you know like in a hurry uh, because the buddha says that you know it's it's like this and like that and uh, we we have to learn ourselves and uh, sometimes uh maybe in this lifetime we can do that much but what's important is that we're really doing something and we doing what what is the the we can call it the responsibility or what is the 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 type of work and effort and the dedication that we can do uh yeah not uh, not too much not trying to be more than we are but also not not less than that and that's a part of also knowing ourselves and sometimes the, 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 when we when we become stronger because we do practice and we do make effort then also we, we discover more potential for ourselves uh but sometimes we also we may discover some serious obstacles and that's fine if we are we know okay so we have to work with certain obstacles difficulties uh, and maybe that's our task in this lifetime to work with these things <clears throat> we may also have doubts whether you know rebirth is like this or like that uh, in this religion in that uh, they say so that's also fine to clarify doubts is a part of the past you know the buddha is not asking us to believe everything and to say yes 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 sadhu 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 all true all right all good but but to to take it to investigate to practice to uh, yeah possibly the more we see that the worldly aims and values and pleasures and uh, achievements are of no real essence and uh, value in terms of a deeper and bigger vision then we put them in the perspective of uh, some things that we can do and appropriate for us but uh, spiritual development and the path of dhamma becomes becomes our priority over these and uh, um, and that's also a way of uh, clarifying uh, priorities yeah so we can we we may have some talents or some things that we can do for 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 like in terms of ordinary benefit uh, but any any kind of a ordinary benefit also can have a can have a dhamma value to it in the way that we do it in the way that it is uh, supporting human beings for for some uh, life of a good quality of a good uh, direction uh if it's only if it's uh, like uh, 
the human world if there's no some kind of a dhamma there for for human beings to be uh, to be humans to be a uh, then indeed it's uh, it's useless yeah <laughs> Actually, whatever we do, whether it's our family life, our daily responsibilities, work and so forth, can be a way of uh, um, doing whatever we do and taking whatever we under undertakings with more wisdom and less ignorance and confusion and delusion and uh, so it's all and then it's all can be a, a part of our uh, path of practice <clears throat> And if it's going to be in that way, it will also make our life lighter, not heavier. Yeah, lighter because we uh, uh, we do things with more uh, balance, with more uh, clarity of what's what's the purpose, what's the point, and also with a important aspect of clarity where we don't want to increase. Uh, craving, attachment, grasping, uh, identifying with things. So we do them for the sake of the benefit of them, whether it's the family, the friends, the society around, one's profession, one's... Uh, um, but uh, the, 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 the sense of uh, heaviness can gradually uh, decrease uh, and the ability to be uh, like... Uh, um, adaptable, yeah. If something is good, we can do it. If it doesn't work, we can give it up. If somebody is listening, we can talk. If not listening, we can also let them let them be. Or yeah, some problems we can solve. Some problems we have to accept that it's the way it is. Some things are are our uh, responsibility to engage with. Some things we can we can put aside and even the Buddha didn't fix the world so surely we will not do it but uh, the Buddha gave much benefit for the world and we can give some benefit uh, so so if things become like more clear then also it should be in the way of lightness not heaviness and even if we can be very diligent and it's not like being lazy and being careless we can be we can have a lot of care for for doing what we can do and we can we can be also very diligent in in uh, in doing in in creating or, or um, living for the sake of benefit not just for the sake of a uh, easy life and lazy life and uh, but we, we we do it in a way that is skillful with wisdom with understanding what we can do what is uh, what is within our sphere of uh, responsibility and uh, ability uh, so yeah it's important that and that will be a good example because sometimes good people also become like uh, you know stressed out or burnt out or uh, because there's not maybe enough wisdom in uh, in uh, in like uh, balancing and uh, knowing what's what's what what to take on what not to take on and uh, yeah
So I think for today, um, just a little talk, and uh, we have continue it with tomorrow. You will translate a bit, or today it's uh, yeah, you will. Okay, maybe we finish with with a chant. Uh,